and welcome back to our next lesson. In this lesson, we want to go a bit deeper into SQL. So what I want to do is to first create a new database. Um, so that's easy to do. You did this for your, uh, your first quiz. So we say sudo postgres followed by psql. Yeah, it drops us as into the super user account. And we can check to see what databases we currently have. I only have the university database. You should have two. One name university and the other one that you created for quiz number one. Okay. So let me create database so uh, let's call let's say create database we give it a name let's call it assets okay oh assets already exist oh yeah here it is okay this is a great opportunity then for me to show you how to delete a database okay to delete a database you simply say drop and drop is sort of the delete uh, equivalent so in databases, we don't really say delete as much, we say drop. So we're going to say drop database. Assets. Okay. And so if we check again, we notice that there are no assets there. All right. So drop means to delete. Okay. So let's now create uh, our database assets. Alright, so here it is. Alright, and remember we said that once when you create a database, we want to also create a user, uh, a regular user who will use that database. Right? We don't do any kind of database work as the super user, Postgres. All we use the super user for is to create databases and to create users. Okay, so uh, let's create a user, which we say create rule, All right? And we tend to use the same name as the database. So create rule assets uh, with a login password. And I'm going to use the same password that I used the last time. All right, uh, found swordfish. Um, and remember your password has to be with quotes okay so single quote pound sword fish pound and the semicolon now I will say this again whenever you log in and you're asked for your password do not include the quotes okay so when they ask you for your password all you should type is pound sword fish pump okay and I'll put it as a comment uh, put a little comment here okay. do not type the single quotes okay good all right so I have created my database I have created a user so now I can exit slash Q Okay, so um, I have my, my director here where I do all my, for this course, I put all my SQL, okay. And so I will um, go into that directory. CDSQL. Okay. All right. So what I want to do, um, I want to create a table. Okay. So now I want to create a table. So again, you know how to create a table, but we're gonna walk. We're gonna walk through it. Okay. So um, let me create a new file. To create a new file, I just say touch, okay? And let's call this file 
my underscore assets dot sql so whenever you're creating a, a, a file that contains sql we have to put a dot sql extension okay great all right so um let me get rid of this stocks the SQL for now. Let's just get rid of that. Let's remove this. Okay. okay. Alright, good. So this is from the last lesson we looked at, right? My courses at SQL. And what we're gonna use for this lesson is this one and then this one. Okay. Now this one here stocks.txt. I will provide this to you. Um, this will be posted on the site. Okay, so uh, let's uh, open this one. My assets. It's currently empty. Okay, so let me put a comment. To make a comment, uh, we put two dashes. Oops, where are we? Here. Here. Mm. Let's try again. Okay. What happened to my assets file? Okay. Good. All right. So we put our comment by using two dashes. Let's close that. And then we will say um, this table contains uh, this table stores my stocks. Okay. And as you know, stocks are simply um, a set of certificates that you can buy, uh, which effectively means you can buy a portion of a company. All right, and sometimes the stock goes higher or goes lower. Um, you can either buy or sell the stocks. All right, um, so I want to create a table to store the stocks that I own. Okay, so we know to create a table, we simply say create table. All right, and we give the table a name. So let's call it my uh, stocks. Okay. And um, uh, yeah, we could just call it stocks. Okay, stocks. So what uh, what does this table uh, what columns does this table have? Because remember, you have a table and the table has column names, columns, similar to a spreadsheet where you have columns and you place rows of data. Uh, whereby each column will hold one specific uh, value. So uh, for stocks, you need the name of the stock, which I will call symbol. Okay. Now, um, these symbols are word, are letters, sorry, are letters. Okay. So if they're letters, then we say that the type, the data type is text. Okay, so we're telling Postgres that um, when I enter the symbol values, they should be strings, they should be text. Okay, and it cannot be empty. Okay, so every, ce every cell um, where there should be a symbol, there should be a symbol there. It cannot be empty. That's what the not null means. Once I have my symbol, I need to find out how many of that stock I own, okay? How many do I own? Do I own 500 shares? Do I own 1,000 shares? So we will say num shares, which is an integer, because it's a number, and it cannot be null, okay? 
And then I want to find out, I want to store when I bought uh, that particular stock. And so I will say date acquired. And I will use the date data type, which stores a date. And that date also cannot be null. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so this is our database table. Uh, let's save this and now let's read this in. Okay, now remember for me to read this in, I have to make sure that uh, I am in the directory where this file is located, right? Great. So now, Let's read this in. Let's create a table. And where do we create tables? We create tables in databases. And which database are we gonna create this table in? In the assets database. So let's log in as the assets um, role. Where did I do that? Yeah, right here, okay? So by the way, um, if you don't want to retype a command, you just use the up arrow key on your keyboard. Just keep pressing up, up, uh, until you get the command that you want. Okay, in this case, um, this is the command I want, right? Remember, to log into the database, we have to say PSQL, uh, localhost, the name of the database, assets, and the username, assets. Enter. And remember, the password is gonna be pong for me, for me. It's gonna be pound sword fish pound. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, do I have any tables? No. No tables. Okay. That's what relation means. Relation means tables. All right. So now I want to create a table, but I am not going to create the table here. I am just gonna read in the file that contains the table. And what's the name of the file? It's myassets.sql. Okay. So I'm just gonna say myassets.sql. Okay. Backslash dt. I have a table there. Um, can I see what the table looks like? Oh, okay. So it's already told me. It's already told me. Um, Actually, it hasn't, so let me just do it. Uh, if I wanted to see the structure of the table, I could just say um, stocks. Okay. Uh, and it shows me it has three columns. These are the types of the columns symbol is text, num shares is integer, date acquired is date, and it tells me if it can be empty or not. That's what nullable means. Nope, cannot be empty, cannot be empty, cannot be empty. Okay. So we have created our table. Okay. And so what we want to do is to populate this table, okay, with data. Now, there are two ways um, of populating uh, a table. In the last lesson, uh, we looked at using insert into, right? Insert into uh, some table, right? And maybe the columns were specified. And then we use value or value. Um, and then we put actual values. Okay. okay, so that's one way, that's a common way. But there's also another way of getting uh, data into, the t into a table, and that's by importing. Uh, similar to how you can import or export data in Excel um, or some other application, you could also import data into our table. Okay, and that's what I want to show you right now. 
So let me open this uh, stocks.txt. I have uh, five stocks listed. Okay. Um, Apple. Okay. So the symbol for Apple's stock is AAPL. Um, and so Apple is the symbol. 1000 is the number of shares that I bought. And this is the date that I bought it. Year, month, day. Okay. Month and day are double digits. Year, four digits. And so I have five rows. Okay. I don't want to type these in. If I had to type in all five of them, I would have had to create five insert into commands. Okay. But I don't want to do that. Uh, especially if it was instead of five rows, I had a thousand rows. I wouldn't want to write a thousand insert into commands. So all I did was to prepare this little thing here where uh, each of the column values I separate with a comma. So these first ones are the symbol. Uh, these uh, second ones are the number of shares. And these um, third ones are the date. <clears throat> okay. Now, before I actually do that, I want to make one change to my table. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to put my drop table command. So drop table stocks if exists. Okay. Um, I think I showed you about, I mentioned this the last time. Instead of me having to actually come here and delete the stocks table when I need to make a change to it, I could just have it right here. Drop table stocks if exists. All right. Now, uh, one change I want to make to this table is I want to create a primary key. What is a primary key? A primary key is a unique identifier. It uniquely identifies every row in your table. Okay, and I'll give you an example. When you come to UB, they assign you a student ID. Okay, nobody else can ever have that number, that student ID. From now until forever, if there's a UB, nobody can ever have your student ID. Okay, so it has to be unique. Why does it have to be unique? Because it represents you. Once I type in your student ID in Zenigrid, I can see everything about you. I can see uh, which courses you're taking. I can see uh, where you live. Uh, I can see um, your transcripts. I can see all of that. Okay, because that represents you. It represents your student life at UB. So every table has a unique identifier, which we call a primary key. So I want to add that primary key to this table. And most of the time, we simply name the primary key as ID. Okay. And the type of the primary key is serial, okay? And we have to say, okay, this will be my primary key. Okay. So this is name, ID. This is the type. And I am saying to the to Postgres that I want you to make this my primary key. Meaning, what does it mean? It means that when ID has a value, that ID, that value should never repeat. 
it doesn't matter how many rows I have in my table, I should never ever see two ID values the same. Okay, and by specifying primary key, PostgreSQL, make sure that that never happens. Okay, all right. That's what primary key means. Okay, so I have made that change. And so now I want to reread in um, my table. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. Ah. Okay. Made a mistake with my command. Right. Let me make sure I didn't read it in. Uh, Stop this. Yeah, didn't read it in. So my command is wrong. Let's make that change. Drop table if exists, stocks. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Let's join this. Oh, okay. How did that get there? Uh, let's try again. Okay. Let's try again. Okay. So it dropped the table and it recreated it. So I can verify that by saying ds uh, stocks. And now I have um, one, two, three, I have four columns. Okay, and notice what it's saying. Uh, I have a primary key, okay, and the important thing, and you will see it later on, uh, is that by using the data type serial, okay, Postgres will create the values for me automatically. I don't have to provide a value for this column. PostgreSQL takes care of it for me. And that's the reason why in your first quiz, I told you do not provide any value for the column, which is of type zero. Okay. Okay, so our table is set. Let's now read in some values. No, I have four columns. One, two, three, four. Now, these are the values I want to read in. But I only have one, two, three values per row. And that's okay. Because the first value, ID, Postgres will create a number, create a value for me. Okay? So I do not have to worry about that. Right. So how do I get these values into my table? That's what we want to do. And we use the copy command. So all I have to do is say backslash copy. And I say, I want to copy into which table? Well, I want to copy into the stocks. Is that spelled correctly? It's the, into the stocks table. And I want to now say which columns, which columns my data should go into. Well, the first uh, thing here, this should go in the symbol. Then the second one should go in the num shares. And then the third one should go into date acquired. So I have to specify that. So I'm going to say the first should go into symbol. The second should go into the num shares. And uh, third should go into the date acquired column. Okay, great. 
and then we're gonna say from where is it? Oh, nothing. Okay. My computer restarted. Let me uh, pause the video until it restarts. Okay, I'm back. Uh, my computer restarted for some reason. Okay, so as I was saying, um, we have three pieces of data and when we look at our table no let's see yeah what oh, stops okay all right so yes so when I look at my table, I have four um, columns, but I only have three pieces of data, okay? And so before my computer uh, shut down, I was telling you that we have to specify uh, the pieces of data that we want copied, okay? So I'll have to retype the whole thing, backslash copy, Okay, uh, into which table uh, it's actually stocks. Okay, why was I typing my stocks? It's stocks. Okay, from uh, what's the uh, file name? Where's my data coming from? Stocks.txt. Okay, stocks.txt. So stocks that txt and I'm, I'll come back to the uh, part where we have to include the columns. Let me just finish this. Delimiter comma. Okay. All right. So let me go back and let me include the columns that we want the data. To be inserted into. Uh, the first one should be symbol. The second one should be num shares. And the third one should be date acquired. Okay, so again, my stocks table has four columns, but I am providing three pieces of data. So I have to specify where the piece, the first piece of data goes into, where does the second piece of data goes into, go into, and where does the third piece of data go into. After I have said uh, where the data should go, I have to say where is the data coming from. Oops. It's coming from the stocks.txt file. Now I have to also tell Postgres how is the pieces of data, how, how are the pieces of data separated. Um, notice I am separating them with commas. They are delimited with commas. And so I have to say with delimiter and in single quotes single quotes single quote the comma and then i close the single quote all right and now my semicolon okay so postgres now knows that when it reads in the data it knows that when it sees the commas it knows that that's how I am separating the, the, the three pieces of data. Okay, so that's it again. Uh, backslash copy where, where you want to copy the data.
from where is the data coming in and how is the data separated. Hit enter. Okay, so it's telling me copy five. So I could see a select uh, all from name of my table stocks. Okay, and there we have it. We have our data uh, in our table. And notice, let me go back to this ID column. We did not include any numbers, but yet we have one, two, three, four, five. That's because this serial tells um, Postgres that it has to put in the number. And the numbers are a sequence, okay? Meaning one, two, three, four, it's just a sequence, one after the next. And what do you notice? The numbers are unique, right? They never repeat because they also have to be a primary key. So if all I have is one, that allows me to know everything about this row. I can find the symbol, I can find the num shares, and I can find the date acquired. If I know the number five, that will tell me everything about this row. I'll be able to know what the symbol is, I will be able to know what the num shares are, and I'll be able to know the date acquired. All right? And so again, the primary key gives you access to everything in the row. Just like how your student ID gives access to everything about your student life. All right, so we're going to leave it here for this video. Uh, it's, it was kind of long. Um, but in the next video, we're going to pick up and we're going to start doing some more queries on this data that we just created. I'll see you in that next video.